say what you want to say, but I tell you, there's a lot of slow-minded people. I'm such a, I've got such a brainy brain that a lot of what I know is sort of instinct, and I take it for granted. Like there are certain things that you can take for granted, you know, if you've got really great family members or really great friends, and sometimes we don't treat them the best that we should because we take them for granted. And they say common sense is not so common. It certainly is true here because there's a lot of communication skills, interpersonal skills that I've learned about how to communicate effectively that so many people, I mean, I know it like the back of my hand, but so many people are so lost. So I'm thinking about what it would be like if I ever became a father and I, I'm not actually dating anybody right now. But suppose that, you know, hypothetically speaking, that I still wanted to feel like I was having children later on with somebody. And so I'm thinking about like loving my unborn children, even though they haven't even been conceived yet even though I don't necessarily know who they'll be with yet. And so I really, really, really love my unborn children. I love the children that I'll be having in a year or two or three. I love them so much that it fuels everything I've done for the last five years. Everything I'm doing today, everything I've done in the last 24 hours has been largely inspired from my unborn children. I think that being a great dad is fundamental to having a great country. I mean, one of, one of those big things was how to make America super great. I think the only way of really doing that <laughs> is actually to have better parents. Like if, if, suppose in the public education system, there was a required course, you know, there, there's required courses like driver's ed and like personal finance or different things. They should make a required course for how to be effective parents. Because honestly, from what I can tell, most parents are terrible parents. That's why the world's kind of crumbling apart. I mean, it's a really dark world. It's dark because darkness is equivalent with ignorance. And there's a lot of ignorance. There's a lot of ignorance in the world. Some people say ignorance is bliss. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. I'll tell you one thing's for sure. It stems from the root of ignore. So if you're choosing not to pay attention, if you're choosing to shelter your attention from somewhere, it's probably out of an allocation that, that you're not necessarily saying no to this, but you're saying yes to lots of other things. You're not necessarily saying no to being a good dad. You're just saying yes to continuing to play, you know, Grand Theft Auto or Call of Duty uh, when you could be reading your child a bedtime story. Like, number one, obviously, would be reading your child a bedtime story. I don't know how many parents are so fucked up. They, they're, you know, loud music, violent games, and there's a, there's interesting is that by a child's, uh, I'd say, 12th birthday or or something like that there's 14,000 simulated death scenes from movies TV shows and video games the average 10 year old or the average 12 year old has already seen 14,000 simulated deaths I'll tell you what that can do for the developing human psychology later on. It's funny, it reminds me of that, uh, that movie, The Christmas Story. There's a movie called Christmas Story. It's a Christmas movie, obviously. And the kid says some bad word, 
and the mom's like, oh, where did you learn that bad word? And obviously it was from his own dad. He lied and said it was from a kid down the street, but but it was from his own parents, you know? Where, where are we actually learning these things? It's from our own parents. Oftentimes, if a relationship is functional or dysfunctional, it can be traced back to early childhood, you know? What was the situation like at five years old, at six years old? Because that pretty much determines the whole rest of your life. No joke about it. And there's something called epigenetics. So we used to think that genetics were a fixed thing. But the newest science says that the six months prior to conception says more about your child's longevity. Suppose that you're wondering if your child is going to develop Alzheimer's. Or if you're wondering if your child is going to develop diabetes. Or you're wondering if your child is going to develop heart disease later on in life when they're 50 years old. The biggest indicator is your diet and lifestyle six months prior to conception. The six months before the child is conceived is what determines what the rest of their life is going to be like when they're 30 years old, when they're 40 years old, when they're 50 years old. I mean, I see a lot of people that don't have a freaking clue about the self-awareness of emotional intelligence. I mean, it begins with, of course, having an awareness into your own psychology, into your own inner child. A lot of people, I mean, children, children are the only free humans. When, when adults grow up and they learn how to be in the modern world, they're basically unlearning their natural perfection. People are born into this world a certain way. They're born into this world the same way that, uh, you know, a, a tree, like, grows from an acorn. It's a natural process. It's been the same over the last 20,000 years, over the last 100,000 years. That acorn has been turning into a tree pretty much the same way over the last 100,000 years. With human beings, that's not so. Everything is fundamentally different over the last 40 or 50 years since the Internet. Nobody knows how to handle it. Nobody knows how to navigate it effectively because it's so new. I mean, 50 years is basically like five seconds ago if you want to go on the big clock of time, you know. There's lots of things about humans today that are different from the way they were 10,000 years ago and so forth. But I will say this, having your inner child is extraordinarily important. The main thing that's different is being able to unlearn the things that you unlearned. Alvin Toffler said that the illiterate of the 21st century will be those that cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. So the public education system teaches you how to learn, but they don't teach you how to unlearn and relearn. Those are things that you'll be lucky if, if you ever learn how to unlearn and relearn. They're entirely necessary, especially because most of everything you believe is nothing but a lie. That's why life hurts so much. That's why life hurts so much. That's why life is not completely effortless. It can be. It's supposed to be. Life is supposed to be playful, fun, effortless. That's the way life was designed to be. The only reason it's not is because you've got bad programming. You know, they, the brain is like, is like the software, you know. The brain is like the software of the human mechanism. And it can be updated. It can be upgraded. The only way to really do that in a long-term strategy is through continuous education, through becoming a ridiculous bookworm, reading a book a week, reading three books a week. How else are you going to reprogram your brain so your life doesn't suck? I don't know a much better way. Truth be told, I 
am 25. I just had my birthday two days ago. I'm 25. So the cool thing is I'm still a child inside. That's the cool thing. And the other cool thing is that I'm extraordinarily wise. I have more wisdom at 25 than most men have in their 50s. And it's because of my library brain. It's because there are so many, they say, common sense, not so common. There are so many things that I, I've taken for granted, and I sort of forget how dumb most people are. Like 98% of people, they just don't got it all figured out. <laughs> They're, they're hurting all of their, supposedly, the people they love the most are the people they're hurting the most. Because they've got no emotional intelligence. Because they've got no self-awareness. If you spent the next 10 years just studying self-awareness, you might begin to have an inkling of what emotional intelligence truly is. No, having your inner child is important. So what I'm saying is, yeah, I'm 25. And yeah, I've got the wisdom of somebody who's 50 or 60. If you see my mannerisms, I'm always doing the mannerisms of typically an old guy. I mean, I still have fun. I still have a youthhood, a youthfulness within me. But there's a lot of things I do, a lot of mannerisms and habits that you typically would only expect from old men. <laughs> and I'm not that old. But my maturity level is extraordinarily high. For men my age, they, they are typically not very mature. They're typically not very mature at all. They're just thinking about getting laid and drinking beer and, you know, they're thinking about work the next day and they're thinking about dirty jokes and all this useless rambling on Twitters and all the social media. How much of their lives are they actually living? Not very much. For the most part, people are not living their own lives. For the most part, everyone else is just living the lives based on the expectations of others. You know, maybe they have uh, a girlfriend or a boyfriend, and so they're sort of like looping their life around that person. Or maybe it's somebody you work with, like a boss or a coworker. All of a sudden, you sort of lose track of who you are because your whole existence is just to serve this other person. It's like, when are you going to serve yourself? When are you going to release and let go of what no longer serves you? That's the big reorganization that's got to take place. Let go of what's not serving you and say hello to what is serving you. Look for things that serve you. Look for situations that please you. Look for reasons to express your creativity, to recognize your marvelousness. So the paradox is that most people are about how old they are. When they're young, they want to be old. When they're old, they want to be young. But they're never happy living how they are. Truth is, the only way to be happy living how you are is to recognize your inner child. So yeah, I'm 25 years old today, but on the inside, I'm like four years old. I'm like four or five years old because the purpose of life is to enjoy every moment. The purpose of life is to enjoy every moment. That's impossible to do if you're not playful. Playfulness is, in, is integral. Playfulness is integral to a long-lasting fulfillment. So take my shoe if you want, because otherwise I'm taking yours. Choose your thoughts. I choose my thoughts any and all of the time. 